Macro photography tools that would really, really help you take better photos. That's what we will talk about today. I am not going to talk about the camera, lens, speed light or diffuser, we'll leave that for a different video. I am going to talk about the things that I accumulated over the years and I just cannot live without it when it's about macro photography. When I go out in the field to take macro photos of flowers, insects or whatever that might be, these tools they are always in my backpack and really help me enormously. I am going to show you the, my five favorite things that I use in macro photography. This is the first tool that I use. Can you guess what this is? Well, it's a stool. It's a very lightweight. It fits in my backpack. I can also attach it outside my backpack by this strap. This strap, you can make it longer so you can use it as a shoulder strap. It has little buckles over here. And the way this tool works, you just turn it and it's telescopic. I gotta do it with my other hand, like right hand. So it's just like that, very sturdy, it holds a lot of weight and what I like the best about it is the fact that it's adjustable. So if you want to go lower like this, because most of the time when you do macro photography your subject is really low to the ground, it will be like insects or flowers or mushrooms or whatever you do. So it's very handy to have something to sit on and that way you're comfortable. If you ever crouch down next to a flower waiting for that perfect bee to land on that perfect flower. Well, you know, you get tired easily and this will really help you to be patient and wait for the perfect shot. Another thing that I like to do with this stool, it's not just a stool for me, I can use it to put my camera on it. I don't like to use tripods when I do macro photography, but I will use my stool because I have it with me all the time and I will prop my camera to whatever height, I will adjust it to whatever height I need and that way I have a stable shot and I don't have to hand hold it and um, just take a better photo. So that is the first tool. It's a telescopic stool. And I will have links to all of these down below in the description. The second tool that I use in macro photography, it's kind of, well, the stool, I don't only use it for macro photography. I use it a lot for wildlife too. When you're out in the field and you were waiting for your subject to show up and you get tired, you have a heavy lens, a heavy backpack, it's nice to have something to sit on. The second tool I have, it's right over here, very lightweight, is from a mind shift. And it's a little tarp, it's very lightweight tarp, it's kind of like the same material an umbrella it's made of. And it packs in really good, it's pretty big, and it's waterproof. And I put this on the ground and it helps a lot. I can um, put it down on the grass. Most of the time when you take macro photos, it will be after rain in the morning when it's dew on the grass. So that way you lay that tarp on the ground and you can lay on your belly or you can put your camera if you need to change lenses. And it's just very, very handy to use. I can't tell you how many times I was out in the field and it was muddy and I didn't really want to sit on the ground or even kneel on the ground, but that tarp really saved me. I just pull it out, put it on the ground, lay on it, take my photos, bunch it all up, throw it in my backpack. The third tool, we will talk about it, I call it rain in a bottle, is this little thing. It's just a little spritz water bottle. I buy this from Amazon. I think it's like 10 bottles for $7. I'll put in the description below. And it really helps when you find that perfect subject and you just wish, man, if this was just after rain and you get those water drops, it would really make this photo better. Well, now you have it, rain in a bottle. Have this with me. I usually have a water bottle with me. So when I need to refill it, I can refill it easily. And I really, really love using this for grass blades, insects, flowers. Yes, I did say insects, especially dragonflies. They don't get bothered by water, so I can spray them and they usually don't move. And uh, if they do fly away, just a little tip for you, dragonflies like to land on the same stick over, over and over again. So if you spray them with water and they fly away, just wait there patiently, sit on your nice stool, and uh, they will come back to the same stick because they kind of always do. They have their favorite spots. Let's see, what is the fourth tool? The fourth tool we're talking about is this Lastolite White Balance card. And I have a whole video about White Balance where I talk in depth about it. And I'll show you how to use this card and how to set custom White Balance in your camera. So this is the Lastolite uh, White Balance card. It has a gray side and a white side. I use the gray side to custom uh, balance my White Balance. 
and then I use the white side to bounce in some light if my subject does not have light and I just need to bounce it from the sun a little bit. Use that. And the last tool, it's this little thing. Can you guess what this is? Well, it's a little diffuser. It's just a pop-up diffuser. And uh, I can put this right on my lens. If I don't want to hand hold it, I will stick the lens through this hole. Or I can just hand hold it. And um, sometimes when your subject is in full sun, bright sun, it's nice to diffuse that light. Otherwise, you get, you know, not a very nice photo. And this saved my photos a lot. It doesn't, you don't need the really big diffuser. If you take a picture of an insect or a small flower, you'll just put this above it between the sun and your subject, and it will act like a soft box, diffuse your light and make beautiful light. And that's how you take better photos. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe. And my name is Skylar Ewing. I will see you in my next video.